Ismael Sosa Jr. was born on June 22, 1945 in Catula, Texas. He is one of six surviving children of the late Ismael and Virginia Sosa. It was fun growing up in Catula. Uh, we were poor. We didn't know any better. We didn't know how poor we were <laughs> until later, many years later. Though neither of his parents had much formal education, Ismael Sosa Sr knew that education was the pathway to success for his children. My father had no formal education. He was just a self-made person, widely read, and he was a brilliant man. My father was, was a builder, a carpenter, and at times, if he had several jobs, the boys would go in. Joe, my oldest brother, myself, Juan, and, and Isaac. And so we grew up also knowing a little bit about carpentry, about plumbing, electricity. My mom was just a housewife. She just washed and iron and, and feed us and make sure that we were bathed and, and clean when we went to school. My father knew uh, that the only way out for us would be a good education. So even though he only pulled us out of school one time for a big job that he had to finish. Otherwise, he made sure we were in school. And the interesting thing, after we all graduated, my father had a packet that, that he would send to each one of us, wherever we were, in college or working or wherever, that had all our school records, our, our report cards, and awards. I remember that I used to break, well, I used to make good grace in elementary school, and it was not so. I, I was, I, you know, I was always kind of in trouble. The family emphasis on education paid big dividends for the Sosa family. All of the siblings received college degrees, including several master's degrees, two PhDs, and one MD. Ismael was an outstanding high school football player at Catula High School, where he graduated in 1964. He had several offers to play college ball, but decided to follow a different path. At one point, right at I graduated from high school, I had several offers, football scholarships, at A&I, at Corpus Christi University at then, at Tulane, and, and so a partial at UT. But then I, I, had, I had too many injuries already, and I decided, nah, that was not the way to go. In the fall of 1964, he enrolled at Sol Ross State University in Alpine, where his older brother Joe was already attending classes. By 1968, he had earned his bachelor's and master's degrees, but more importantly, he earned the affection of an Alpine native, Eunice Flores, who he married on April 2nd, 1966. I wound up in, in Alpine, and uh, I got my first degree there, and... Uh, I married my wife there, the best thing that ever happened to me, and I met her at, at uh, Emmanuel Baptist Church. Following Ismael's graduation from Sol Ross, the Sosas moved to Uvalde where Eunice enrolled as a student, eventually pursuing a career in education. And Ismael began his career at SWTJC as an English and Spanish instructor. I was interviewed by Gerald Underwood, and then he... Uh, recommended me to, to Mr. Matthews, and Mr. Matthews took it to the board, and uh, the rest is history. <laughs> His first year at SWTJC, Ismael said he picked up one invaluable piece of advice from longtime SWTJC history instructor, Harry Lawrence. My first faculty meeting came in, and I just sat next to Harry Lawrence. The meeting was about over, and Harry Lawrence turns over to me, and he told me, he says, to survive here, you need a good sense of humor. <laughs> so <laughs> I've always had a good sense of humor and I've never, I've taken my job seriously. I never have taken myself seriously, you know. Ismael worked his way through the administration ranks as Director of Community Services, Dean of Student Services, and Dean of Admissions before being selected as President in 1999. In 2000, he received his Ph.D. in Educational Administration from Texas A&M University. 
Among all his accomplishments in his early years as administrator, Dr. Sosa lists starting the adult basic education program across the region and establishing a student emergency assistance fund as two of his proudest. Mr. Matthews, he made me director of community services about the second year. And I taught part-time, and then I was director of community services. What he wanted me to do is to set up adult basic education. And so I went with him to one of the school districts. He did the first presentation, and then from then on he turned me loose, and I went throughout the uh, service area, and we set up adult basic education. Immediately I realized that the students were where I wanted to be. I wanted to work with students. I knew that as I climbed up the ladder, that I could influence policy. And at, at a higher level, I could do things to help our students. And one of the first things that I did as Dean of Students was set up a student emergency fund where the students, if they need 30, 40, 50, $100, they would just come to me and, or later on to any of the deans and, and we would just sign a little deed. I took the monies from, I asked permission first from the president and, and took it out of the vending and coke machines and set up that fund. And it's been a revolving fund for many, many years. According to Dr. Sosa, a string of dedicated mentors, an outstanding faculty, talented administrators, and a supportive board prepared and helped him throughout his tenure at SWTJC. We've always had great faculty members. As I told our faculty this last time, that the one constant has been a great faculty. And we've had outstanding students also. And, and so I, I surrounded myself with the best administrators I, I could find. I've been very lucky to have uh, uh, Dr. Bennett, uh, Dr. Gonzalez, the, you know, President-elect, uh, Joe Barker, and then had great luck with uh, Eagle Pass with, uh, after Mr. Bermea. Uh, he was replaced by Gilbert Jr. and done an outstanding job. The board has been great. They set the tone and starts there at their level. And the fact that most of them came through school here has made a big difference because they care deeply about the place. And, and so I owe so much to them because they've been very supportive. I can't thank Mr. Flores enough and, and the rest of the board members. They're, they're a great team and it starts there. During his 13 years as president, enrollment grew at SWTJC from just under 3,000 students to an all-time record of 6,293 in the fall of 2010. In the 45 years, I've seen a lot of changes, from barracks, basically, to bricks, you know, to the border, as Billy Ward said, and then to the internet. Went from about 500 or maybe 600 students to, we've hit 6,000 several times. So, and then the expansion, the Pearsall campus, Crystal City. I know I was involved uh, in Eagle Pass and, and Del Rio, working with the different community members there to help us expand. And then Hondo, Blaine and I worked real hard to establish that. And then uh, the, now there's the possibility that we may be going to Castroville. Uh, Dr. Gonzalez is working on that. The college's Division of Workforce Training has been expanded during his tenure. And in 2011, under the leadership of Dr. Ismael Sosa, SWTJC was named by the prestigious Aspen Institute as one of the top 10 community colleges in the nation. Southwest Texas Junior College is working with one of the uh, largest Hispanic populations in the country. It also is working with students uh, who are by and large not college ready. And yet, Southwest Texas Junior College makes sure that students succeed. It has one of the highest rates of success for students who are not college ready in the country. And by doing that, it's delivering not just for the workforce, but also for students, uh, enabling them to enter the middle class, enabling them to get good jobs. During his time in Uvalde, Dr. Sosa has been active in a variety of community service activities. He was a trustee with the Uvalde CISD board for nine years, including four as president. In recognition of his distinguished record of community service, he was named by the Chamber of Commerce in 2011 as Uvaldian of the Year. Dr. Ismael Sosa Jr. has served this community and the entire region with distinction for over 45 years. 
But his most important legacy is the encouragement and support he enthusiastically shared with the thousands of students whose lives he's enriched on their individual paths to success in higher education. His children, Dr. Virginia Sosa Cox, Dr. Ismael Tres Sosa III, and Joshua Sosa, all former students at SWTJC, as well as his grandchildren, Ryan Cox, Landon Cox, Jillian Alexis Sosa, and Sofia Elisa Sosa, are some of his biggest fans. Congratulations, Dad. I just want to share with you how much of an inspiration you've been to me and so many others. No matter where I go, people are always telling me, if it wasn't for your dad, I wouldn't have graduated. If it wasn't for your dad, I wouldn't have had these books. If it wasn't for your dad, I wouldn't have gotten bailed out of jail. So I want to thank you for everything you've done for me and everyone else. And behind every man is a good woman. And as a first lady mom, you are a class act. I have a little present for you. It says, a retired husband is a wife's full-time job. So even though you think you're done, you really aren't. I love you both so much. Hey, Dad. I uh, just wanted to wish you congratulations uh, on tonight. Uh, you've had an incredible uh, storied career at the junior college. It's, uh, it's been a long road, but uh, you know it's one that uh, I know you've worked so hard and you've given so much and you've helped so many people along the way, including myself. I can. I can still remember uh, when uh, you had uh, said uh, when I was making plans to go to, to some uh, you know university, and you were saying, "Well, I think you should probably stay here for a year." I said, "I don't think so." And uh, you and I had our differences, but uh, you know what? It, uh, that decision to stay at the junior college for a year made uh, absolutely all the difference uh, in my career. Um, great faculty. I can still recall uh, a lot of those professors. Uh, you know, Lawrence Garcia, Kerbo, Lampy. Uh, all those guys, um, they're all great, and I learned a ton, and it was a great stepping stone onto Texas A&M University for me, and then, you know, onto med school, and 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 the rest is history. So, um, but thank you so much. Uh, I, you know, it's uh, for us. You know, we get people that we don't even know come to us. You know, when I'm at Walmart or if I'm at HEB, and just you know, hey, tell your dad thank you. You know, he's done so much for us. He's, you know, we have people randomly stop by the house to give gifts, coffee mugs from different universities all around Texas and you know just gifts that come in all the time just for you know how much you've helped everybody and you know it's made all the difference in the world and I think uh, you know your career at the junior college is uh, is really um, is a great one and it's one to be remembered and celebrated so congratulations. Hey dad how are you doing? It's good to see you. I'm not really seeing you right now. I'm actually uh, being videoed but you know people say that they don't think that I have maybe a job. So I, I just wanted to give a little proof of a job ship here and uh, as well as to let you know a couple other things. You know, some of these are some of the projects that we were able to accomplish recently. Our uh, customer care unit is ISO certified. Our, uh, our ESD unit is also certified. And our other big unit that provides generation power, recently certified. All projects that I will, I help to assist and, uh, and help to you know, from the floor up, bring to, bring to life. But Dad, uh, the reason I'm, I'm kind of really here, and you know what, let's go to my office real quickly, so that way we can have this discussion there. Dad, as you can see, this is exactly the reason why we're here today, why everybody's here to celebrate you today. Dad, I can't tell you how proud of you I am. Uh, everything you've done for me, afforded me and this family in our lifetime, the way you focus on education, the way you've always just treated others with respect, courtesy, and dedication to them. You've, you've been a role model uh, my whole life, and I have always looked up to you, sir. And I, I can't tell you how proud I am of all the accomplishments that you've uh, afforded us, uh, afforded the community, uh, afforded strangers that came to your, came to your office, uh, showed up, afforded all the students uh, throughout the years that you've been at the junior college. Dad, like I said, uh, there's nothing, there's nothing more I can say that other than how proud I am and, and how I hope to always live up to your expectations and uh, do things the way you would want me to do them. Uh, so with that, Dad, I can't tell you other than, you know, you know me, you know who I am. I'm your son, of course, you know, you might, you might not say that all the time, uh, you might not claim that, but, you know, I, I claim you as my father and for good reason because of what you've done and what you've shown me and, and what you've afforded me through my life. Dad, again, congratulations, sir. You've spent a tremendous amount of time helping people. Now it's time for you to help someone else. And uh, 
I got a couple girls that, uh, and a couple bag of diapers at that that uh, have your name on it. So uh, we'll see you soon, sir. Congratulations. Congratulations on your retirement, Grandpa. Now you can take us fishing, and to Dairy Queen, and hunting, and to Dairy Queen, and even to school, and to Dairy Queen. We love you, Ito. I love you, Ito. Say, come to Austin. Come to Austin. We'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. I don't live far from here. I'll go by here and have good memories. It's been a good ride, really. It's been <laughs> exciting and <laughs> kind of bumpy sometimes. Well, I see skies of blue and I see clouds of white and the brightness of day. I like the dark and I think to myself.